Hello everyone, in today's tutorial, we'll see how to create a cool vintage text effect template using Adobe Photoshop. Alright, so let's get to it. Alright, now before we're gonna start this uh, tutorial, make sure to download these uh, assets that we'll be using to create our text effect. And make sure to install this font before you launch uh, Adobe Photoshop. This way you can find it in the font list in Photoshop. And of course I'm gonna make sure to put a link where you can download all this. Alright? So I will go ahead and open Adobe Photoshop. And then I will go to File, New. And I'm gonna create a new document with 1920 in the width, 1080 in the height. Uh, 300 in uh, the resolution and RGB in the color mode and of course you can change whatever width and height you want just keep in mind that you might need to tweak all uh, the values that we are going to use in the lighter size later whether you're gonna create a, a small size document or a bigger size document all right and I will press ok all right now the first thing that we are going to do is to create a background so I will go and I will add a solid color from here and the color we'll be using is this one in here F89775 and I will press OK so let me delete this background in here and I will call this PG for background alright now we'll go ahead and I will apply the first texture that we are going to use which is this one in here so we'll take it and open it just like this and then I will take it and drag it just like that now I'm gonna press shift on my keyboard and I will rotate it just like this and then I'm gonna press shift alt on my keyboard and I will make it bigger so it will fit with the, the canvas in here and then I will one click on this check mark alright now I'm gonna restorize this texture by right click and choose restorize layer and I will name it texture one and then I'm gonna change the blending mode of it to uh, multiply alright now we'll go ahead and I will apply the second texture which is this one so we'll take it again and open it and then I will place it just right here and again I'm gonna press shift alt and I will make it bigger so it will fit just like that and I will one click on this check mark Alright, now I'm gonna restore it again and I will name it Texture 2 and this time I'm gonna press Ctrl I so I will invert uh, the color of it so whatever was black it turned to white now now I'm gonna change the blending mode of it to overlay and I will put down the opacity to around 50% alright, so we're done creating the background now I'm gonna select all these layers in here and I will put them in a group and I will name this group to PG for background alright now I'm gonna create a new layer and I will call this layer main text and then I will right click and I will convert it to smart object now I'm gonna double click on this smart object and here where we're gonna add the text that we are going to use so I will go ahead and select my text tool and then I'm gonna choose the font from the link in description below which is this one and I will put 200 points in here and I will one click to type vintage and then I will switch to my move tool and I will put it just right here I think it's a little bit big so I will press ctrl T and I will make it smaller just around here and I will press enter alright now I'm gonna close this tab in here and I will press yes to save it and as you can see because it's a smart object it will appear in here alright now I'm gonna make three copies of this main text uh, layer so I'm gonna press ctrl J three times and then I will uh, rename this first copy to surface one and the other one to surface two and the third one to surface three and then I'm gonna select them all and I will put 0% in the fill alright now I'm gonna uh, select the surface one layer 
and then I will open the blending option by going to this FX icon and I will select blending options in here all right let me take this window and put it just right here all right now the first side that we are going to apply is a color overlay so I'm gonna change the color to white color and then I will keep uh, the blending mode set to normal and the opacity to 100% next I will go and select bevel and emboss and in the style I will keep its inner bevel and smooth in the technique but I'm gonna change the depth to 115 and for the direction I will keep it up but in the size I'm gonna put 15 pixels and I will keep the soften set to 0 and for the shading in here I'm gonna make sure that uh, use global light is unchecked and then I will put 120 in the angle and for the altitude I will keep a 30 angle in here and I will keep uh, the glass counter uh, as its default in here and in the highlights I will keep uh, the blending mode set to screen and the color white and for the opacity I think I'm gonna put 56 and in the shadow I will keep the blending mode multiply the color black and I will put the opacity to 60% all right now I will add a texture to it so I will uh, select texture and here where we're gonna use the pattern from the link in description below so just open pattern in here and you know load it from this gear icon by going to this load pattern and you know locate it from your hard drive I already have it in here so I'm gonna go down and select it this one in here and then I'm gonna put down the scaling to 20% and I will keep the depth set to 100 and I will make sure that link with layer is checked it's really important to check this one in here all right now I'm gonna add a drop shadow to it and for the blending mode I will keep it multiply but I'm gonna change the opacity to 50% and then I'm gonna uncheck uh, use global light and I will change the angle to 110 all right for the distance I'm gonna put two pixel 0% uh, in the spread and for the size I will put 4 next I will add a little bit of noise so I'm gonna put 15% and hope it's okay and this would be our first surface uh, in here now I will go and select the surface to layer and again I will open the blending options and again I'm gonna add a bevel and emboss but I'm gonna change the, the size to 22 pixels and in the angle in here I'm gonna put 130 and for the altitude I will put 48 and again make sure that use global light is unchecked all right in the highlights in here I'm gonna put down the opacity to 0% and for the shadow I'm gonna put 50% and again I'm gonna add a texture so I will select texture in here and I will keep everything in here the same and again make sure that link with layer is checked it's really important all right now I'm gonna add a satin to it so I will select satin and I will change the blending mode to normal and I will change the color to white and for the opacity I'm gonna put 70% and in the angle I'm gonna put 20 uh, for the distance in here I'm gonna change it to uh, 70 pixel and I will keep the size set to 80 and for the counter in here I'm gonna change it to Gaussian in here if you can't know the name just you know go to this gear icon and you know choose large list from here and this way you can know the names of uh, the, the contour I choose Gaussian in here and the piece okay all right so as you can see this is our second surface as you can see we improved the interior shading now we select the surface 3 layer and I will go to open the blending options again and this time I'm gonna add a stroke and I will put uh, 4 pixel in the size uh, the position I will change it to outside and for the blending mode I will keep it normal but I'm gonna put down the opacity to 80% and then I will go to the fill type and I will change it to pattern instead of color and again I will choose the same pattern that we used which is this one in here and I will uh, put down the scaling to 30% and again make sure that link with layer is checked all right next I will select uh, pattern overlay and again I will select the same pattern that we used and I will put down the scaling to 30% again and I will go to the opacity and I will put 60% and for the blending mode I will keep it normal and the is okay all right so this would be uh, the surface of this effect in here so I will select all these three layers by pressing ctrl and then I'm gonna press ctrl G to put them in a group and I will call this surface 
Alright, now we select the main text again and I will make two copies of it by pressing Ctrl J two times and I will name this first copy to stroke one and the second copy to stroke two and again I will select them both and I will put the fill to 0%. Alright, now we select the stroke one uh, layer in here and I will open the blending options and then I will go to stroke and this time I'm gonna change the fill type to color and I will choose a white color first and then I will keep the size set to zero but I'm gonna put up the opacity to 100% and make sure that the position is set to outside and the blending mode is set to normal all right and the is okay now i'm gonna copy the same layer style that we used for this stroke one layer so i'm gonna press alt and i will take this fx icon in here and i will drag it to the second stroke layer in here and as you can see we made a copy all right now i'm gonna select them both and then i'm gonna press ctrl g to put them in a group and i will call this stroke Alright, now we'll go back to the main text again and I will make two copies of it by pressing Ctrl J two times and then I will name this first copy to Shadow 1 and the second copy to Shadow 2 and then I will select them both and I will put 0% in the fill. Alright, now we select the Shadow 1 layer and I will open the blending options again and then I will select uh, Drop Shadow and then I will change the blending mode to normal and I will keep the color black and the opacity I will change it to 70% and for the angle in here I'm gonna change it to 60 angle and I will make sure that use global light is unchecked next I will go to the distance and I will put 8 pixel and in the spread I'm gonna put 12 and 16 in the size and I will keep 15% uh, in the noise and I will press ok Alright, now we select the Shadow 2 layer and again I will open the blending options and I will go to Drop Shadow again and this time I'm gonna put down the opacity to 10% and I will keep the color black and the blending mode to normal but I'm gonna change the angle to 145 and again I will make sure that use global light is unchecked and I will change the distance to 20 pixels and the spread to 56% and the size to 5 pixels and I will put down the noise to around 7% and I will press OK alright now I'm gonna select them both and I will press Ctrl G to put them in a group and I will call this group shadow and as you can see we're done creating our text effect it starts to look really good and vintage now we're gonna add a, a vignette to it so we select this first group that said surface in here and then I will go and add a solid color from here and I will keep the color to black and then I'm gonna change the blending mode to overlay and I will put down the opacity to 40% alright after that I will select the layer mask in here and then I will go to my gradient and I will make sure that my foreground color is set to black and then I will open the gradients in here and I will choose the second gradient that set foreground to transparent and I will press ok next I'm gonna change the side of the gradient to radio it's the second one in here and then I'm gonna go to the center in here and I will press shift and I will one click and drag just like that alright now while I'm selecting the layer mask in here I'm gonna press ctrl T and then I will zoom out a little bit and then I will go to the edge in here and while I'm pressing alt on my keyboard I will one click and drag just like this alright now I'm gonna take it and put it in the center and I will do the same for this one in here just like this and I will make it a little bit wider and then I will one click on this check mark as, as you can see we applied this vignette that's added more contrast let me name it vignette alright now the last thing that we are going to add is a photo filter so I will go to adjustments and I'm gonna choose photo filter and then I will open the colors from here and I'm gonna choose a light blue color Just like this one and I will press ok and then I'm gonna put the density to around 30% and that would be all now we end up with this really cool vintage text effect in here and now it's time to try it with a different word so I will go ahead and 
open uh, the smart objects from here you can just double click on it and then i'm gonna select this text in here and i will double click on it and i'm gonna type subscribe and i will switch to my move tool and i will take it and put it in the center just like that now i'm gonna close this smart object and i will press yes to save it and there we go we have the same style applied to this word too and that will be all for this tutorial i hope that you enjoyed and you liked this video and it was a little bit helpful for you don't forget to subscribe and comment and you know show me out on instagram if you tried this effect and have a nice day thank you for watching